a part of this, I think, is that, and I, I would say this is something I've reflected on um, personally a lot, is how much as players, and this was something I did, and as a leader, I feel a little guilty of, is we were so desperate as players to make sure the league survived and was healthy at all costs that a lot of it was like let's keep these things quiet if it you know if we had a bad experience personally if something wasn't right let's try to handle it behind the scenes we don't want that to get on twitter we don't want people to think bad things about the league like you know we want it to be here at all costs and then i think it got to a point where both we know that the league will be here it is successful there's been uh, you know the the owners have invested a massive amount in this as well i think we can't speak enough about it's not just you know we're talking a lot about the players but obviously for things to run there's a ton going on um, that I'm now learning about on the league side to, to continue to grow this um, so there's that and then it's you know this year a lot of really brave women came out and said this happened to me and it wasn't okay and whatever that is it, it you know there's a, there's a whole spectrum of things and to know that you can say that and that you will be believed and that the league is still going to be here and we can make it better is really, really powerful. And I think we didn't know that before. We didn't know one if players would be believed or listened to and often they weren't, we've learned. And we didn't know if the league could survive people saying, hey, I love this. I love this game, but this isn't good enough or this happened to me or this isn't healthy for me. So I'm glad that we've learned that we can all withstand that and we can get better from it. And, and there's huge power in that. So I hope that players now feel really comfortable speaking up um, more so than I ever did, more so than, you know, I think my peers in my playing days did. Yeah, I think that's that's perfectly said. And um, I relate to all of that. And, you know, I think the thing, too, is that there's powers in there's power in numbers. Right. And as Yael just said to brave women coming forward and, and speaking out was huge. Right. For this. But now you have a collective. I mean, these conversations, Yael and I are were teammates and it wasn't these conversations were happening just behind the scenes. But one, how, again, how do you get that out? How do you say that? I mean, it was a pretty fear driven environment for a long time. And now, as, as Yael just alluded to, when you have somebody that's um, brave and steps up about some really important issues, I think that just elevates everybody else. Like, okay, what, how can I do my part? I need to speak up. And then when you have the collective, then you just feel more and more empowered. And, you know, I think rounding out kind of what I was saying from the beginning, that to me is what sums up the CBA. Yes, the bullet points and stuff are amazing and all the details um, that were mentioned earlier too, but just the power in that for the players to have a collective voice and to say, okay, like we have ownership because in the past there hasn't been that. It's very much like hiding and hoping and um, just getting by, right? And it's, it's as much as you love the sport, there was times when that was very difficult a bit of fear driven throughout the entirety of this negotiations. I think that's very honest to say and very truthful. And what maybe makes the conclusion of this and that much sweeter and that much more to celebrate because it was such a long road for the players and former players to get here. Um, when we look at more of the details of this CBA specifically, I mean, free agency is one that is just being celebrated throughout fans and players and former players right now it's starting in 2023 uh for players that have given six years of service now Lori, i'm looking at you for this as a player that didn't have the option for free agency how does having free agency in the nwsl change the league moving forward for veterans especially Oh, well, I think it's, I mean, to be able to um, have a say in where you're going to go, is a, that alone is amazing, right? So I think, um, you know, it, it gets us on par with um, the other leagues in the world. And, but also, again, just having a say about where this is a career, right, for these players and to be able to be able to have the free, um, freedom to be able to move and, again, to have the say in that it is massive, Um I like the structure of it. So if you have some longevity in the league, then that starts quicker. Um, you know, instead of just it's a free for all and that maybe wasn't going to be a big negotiation. I don't know, because that wasn't obviously in the, um, the, the, the meetings. But yeah, I mean, I think anytime that you can have 
the ability to have some say in your career is is huge. And I think that just opens up doors for more movement in general players. I said this in the draft too about um, players being able to, that were under national team contract and then signing with their teams where, yes, some players might go overseas, but there's going to be a lot more room for movement in the long run that I feel like will just make the league stronger. Yeah. I, um, I I think looking at how they're going to roll it out, I think was not only interesting, but I think it's actually kind of smart, you know, and it makes sense that this was the terms that both sides of the table actually kind of ended up agreeing upon, you know, when starting it in 2023, right. We're talking about a year out, six years of service, 2024 players, five years of service, and then a concept of some restricted free agency for players in 2024 with, with three years of service. So sort of just kind of staggering it out a little bit. Um, and this current CB, CBA is going to run through 2026. And maybe you don't, you don't want to put the horse in front of the carriage here, but it's been 10 years, right. In terms of, in terms of this league, in terms of talking about, com, you know, salaries in the league and in terms of a competitive salary going from 22K in 2021 to now 35K in 2022, I'll just, I'll just ask it. Is it good enough? Is it, is it good enough? Laura, I'm, I'm going with you on this one, Laura. Is, is, is that, is that good enough? Right now? Uh, I mean, I'm one to say that, no, it's not good enough. That, like, I mean, you know, there's an asterisk there because yes, is it better than it was? Um, I think we're making um, massive headway in, in other areas as well. And it's not, um, it's more nuanced than just saying good or bad. Um, right. However, um, I think it is important to pinpoint that there is progress. Um, but I mean, we're always going to strive, right? Strive for, for better and to take care of the players even more. And I think this is a, a an excellent um, starting point to at least continue for negotiations. And, and, you know, there's a lot of other things in the CBA that one, I'm not familiar with or, or know all the ins and outs, but there's also a, a, a collective amount of other things that help bridge that gap in terms of just being the pay or the minimum pay at 35k. Yeah, and, and increasing year over year. I mean, there are so many nuances in this negotiation and in the CBA, and that's why lawyers look at it. And that's why we have smart people like Yale on the committee reading this 150 page document. So then when we get to the end of it, we do have a bit of celebration. And this this dropped the night before preseason started. So we're into it. 2022 season of NWSL is here. We are in the thick of it. Uh, Yale, for you, it's the first week of preseason. You're in the front office at Gotham. Um, the fans are hype. The media were hype. Uh, you guys is, are hype as former players, but at Gotham this week, preseason, how are the vibes? How are the players feeling? What's, what is the energy like? Yeah. I mean, there's, a, there's a lot of excitement. I think there's always a lot of excitement surrounding preseason, but this one is really special, um, because of, you know, the CBA and the timing of it. I do want to point out one more thing, not to skirt your question. Cause I do think people here are, are really excited. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have to be indoors, uh, due to the weather situation, but there's a lot of excitement and good energy. Um, but I, I do, I want to point something out that I think is, is really, this was a lot of the conversation on the league's part too, is that when we look at player compensation, it's not just the base salary, like the teams provide housing. Um, they're, there's like benefits of 401k now as part of the package. So we're, we're looking at, is the number 35k good enough? No, no, everybody would hope that, you know, that goes up over time. But I believe that, you know, the, the, and a huge talk here when it comes to this total compensation was also like growing the pie for everybody. So we've always said this as players is we want the league to succeed so we can as players, I'm saying we still as players, but so the players can share in the success of the league. So now seeing that it's like, how do we have everybody succeed more? And, and that's what the work is over the next five years. So the next time this is the conversation, there's a bigger pie to, to split up and for the players to have a slice of. So I think that it is very, very positive. Although you could argue like, is that number good enough? You know, I think these are, these are the top 1% in their field athletes. So it will never, it will never be good enough. You could pay millions and millions and still not good enough to, I think, but, but um, the, the overall compensation package is really, really um, 
much improved and a huge investment from the league over over these five years too yeah it's a great point and you know and also the mental health aspect like to be able to take yeah and, and that's what i was mentioning too there's a lot more that it's involved than just the the base the base salary but you make some really good points